I'm uh, Ben Bakenta. I'm from the Puget Sound Regional Council in the Seattle metropolitan area, and I'm a program manager in the growth management department there. The Growing Transit Communities Project is really something new for our organization, the, P the PSRC. Uh, we're the M Metropolitan Planning Organization for the four county central Puget Sound region. And um, as that type of organization for our region, we've done long-range transportation plans, we've done a long-range vision growth management plan for the region under our State Growth Management Act. Um, but this is a first attempt um, at the regional scale to sort of bridge the gap between the, 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 the broad visions that our region has created and the local implementation that our cities and towns and transit agencies are responsible for. And so this particular project is uh, a really focused look at the existing and future light rail transit station areas that are being developed by Sound Transit, which is our regional transit authority. And it's a deliberate attempt to involve a wider um, cross-section of stakeholders uh, in the community. So community organizations, environmental groups, public health agencies, uh, public agencies, the private sector, you name it. We're trying to get as many people as possible involved very early on in what decisions should be made in these transit station areas that, will be, we, that we will be developing over the next 20 years. Uh, we want to create equitable transit communities, equitable development in the region. Um, when we did our initial needs assessment and uh, existing conditions report looking at these transit station locations, uh, we saw that um, for the most part, um, outside of the city of Seattle where many of our um, public housing um, projects are, are located, very close to the existing Central Link Light Rail Station, once you got out of the city of Seattle, there was very little uh, affordable housing along the projected uh, light rail lines. Uh, there was market rate affordable housing, but there was very little um, permanent affordable housing uh, throughout the region. And one thing that we saw through the development of Central Link in the city of Seattle was the um, rapid escalation of, of land values and of housing costs in the, in the Rainier Valley in particular around the station areas. We're making a massive public investment in, in the region and in infra infrastructure. The citizens of the region have decided, have voted to invest upwards of $15 billion in this system. We want to make sure that everybody benefits from that, those investments and from the system. As part of our Growing Transit Communities project, we have an affordable housing action strategy. And that strategy um, has been focusing on developing new tools for both the private sector um, developer as well as for nonprofit housing developers. So new tools, new regulatory approaches um, to look at how you incent and encourage uh, affordable housing development in particular places, um, as well as other new financial mechanisms that can provide resources to both of those types of to both private and uh, nonprofit developers. We're also working with a pretty broad consortium as well to develop an affordable housing transit orient oriented development fund. Um, similar to, there's a, a fund called TOA in the San Francisco Bay Area, a, a transit oriented affordable housing fund. So essentially a revolving loan fund that would provide resources for land acquisition and other uh, pre-development uh, financing needs, in particular for affordable housing in transit proximate locations. And then we're also working with uh, providing technical assistance to the, the 15 cities and the four counties that um, are direct, most directly affected by these investments um, to, to talk to local jurisdictions about both incentives um, zoning and inclusionary zoning um, approaches for the, that sort of regulatory portion of affordable housing that you might require um, within a particular district. As you look around the region, you can see people that don't have good access to transit or access to good transit um, pay much higher percentages of their household incomes on that combined housing and transportation expense. If we can reduce that, then people and households have, much, have more resources for education, for recreation, for um, their, their food budgets, you name it. If we can lower those housing and transportation costs, we can really improve the quality of life for much more, many more people in the region.